Wishful Thinker Television. Brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. The great indoors for those who love the great outdoors. Toyota Trucks. Moving forward. Hewlett Packard. Invent. St. Croix Rod. Handcrafting fishing rods for over 60 years. Good morning. Here we are once again, favorite fishery mine, Pueblo, Colorado, South Central Colorado, outside of Pueblo. We're going wiper fishing. Got a beautiful morning. Beautiful Joined morning. this morning with Troy Coburn. Seen him on Fishful Thinker before. Hopefully you've seen him on Fishful Thinker before. We're going wiper fishing, top water fishing here. It's uh, middle of October in Colorado. Got a gorgeous morning. Uh, this should be fun. We're going to go looking for shad. What do you think? Go find some shad. Absolutely, yep. Get some top water baits working for us. Uh, it should be an absolutely beautiful morning. It's brisk. As you can see, it's cold. We got all the Gore-Tex on. But uh, it's going to be good fun. Foggy morning. What do you think? Top water's first thing? Absolutely. Yeah, top water is some, by far the most fun way to catch into those, those toad wipers. That's what I'm hoping, and we're hoping for it could be anywhere from three pounders to 15 or 18 or maybe 20 pounders. State record even <laughs> came out of this lake, so there's no telling what we're going to get. Monsters. Uh, walking baits, popping baits, buzz baits, possibly some spoons, certainly a chrome jerk bait. Uh, we, swim baits. Swim baits. Yeah. I like what he's thinking. So we got options. So uh, let's get it done. We're going to get out of the here and uh, get over and check out our, uh, our wiper bite on a beautiful fall morning. Let's do it. You ready? I'm ready. Pueblo, Colorado, South Central Colorado, like we talked about. It's the middle of October. It's brisk, cold mornings, glass calm, bait fish all around the boat. Got the big topwater baits out, and we're going to try to catch some wipers. Now, wipers are pelagic in nature. They move around a lot, which means they're very unpredictable that, uh, in terms of being able to locate them. So we're going to concentrate on locating bait. We're going to stay adjacent to the main river channel, and we'll see if we can get some to bust for you here right quick. There's some big old honking wipers in here, so we'll see what happens. One thing about fishing for wipers is that uh, they do move a lot, so there's no point in beating a bunch of dead water. Yeah, come on, big wiper. They ain't here, dude. We got to go. Yeah, I would have to I agree. I can tell you right now, they're not here. There's another big boil up there in front of us. Uh-huh. See this? Oh, oh, buddy. You see that? Oh, get yeah. on your horse, buddy. Let's go get them. We've seen the enemy in front of the boat right here. They're busting bait right in front of us. We don't want to go in on them too fast. This is a you know, 3,000 pound boat or whatever. You don't want to go barging in on them, pushing a bunch of water, but we're going to sneak up a little bit on them. Troy here's got uh, trigger happy. <laughs> oh yeah, they're on it too. He's got the wrong bait though. Yeah, I do. I should be throwing top water. Oh yeah, look at this boil right here. Right here, big old oh, boil. I missed it, you know. Okay. Here we go, fixing to be fish on right here. I have a feeling. Fish, fish on, fish on. What you got out there? I bet that's not a trout. I don't know, but it is big. Is it? Yep. All right, we're gonna put this down here and we're gonna see what we got now. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's fishing. You can't take it too seriously. What you got there, buddy? I don't know. We're about to find out. What's your best guess? Oh, oh it's a wiper. Definitely a you wiper. Think? Hey, he's yeah. pushing bait. And he got him to bite the spinner bait. It is a wiper. It's a decent wiper. And we have made contact with the enemy, Mr. Coburn. Well <laughs> done. Let's see what you got there. Yeah, that's a, an average fish. Right? <laughs> we're going we're That's going a good fun. We doors. should be able to get ones that now, are a lot bigger than you that. You want to see how tough a wiper is? I'm gonna show this to everybody. This was a spinner bait before I started using it. Now it's just a mangled twisted piece of metal. Huh. Look at he tied my metal. He tied no. that, that in a knot. Sure got your attention. You got a good hook on him. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Good <laughs> job. Now what's fun what's funny, we rotated through we, we 
we rotated through several baits. We couldn't get them to go in the top waters right off the bat, so we gave up on those for a few minutes. Whoa. And uh, we're fishing with just a whole variety of shad colored baits. Troy's gonna dance with this one real quick. Very nice. So first wipe of the morning, and uh, we'd only been out for maybe half an hour or something, so yeah. 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and uh, we got to start. Got yep. this one to bite a spinner bait. Give him, a, give him a good healthy drink of water. Alrighty. Nice and slow with that. Hang on to him for just a minute. Hang on to him, hang on to him, hang on to him. All right, what a beautiful fish. There he goes. All right, good job. Yeah, like the icebreaker, huh? The icebreaker. Call that my monkey fish. Yeah, yeah exactly. Get I better get my act my together back. and start going here. <laughs> good work. All right. I've got to untie my spinner bait. Untie your spinner bait. Yeah, that's it. He's an angle bitch thing. You know, people ask me in my travels and seminars at Sportsman's Warehouses and International Sportsman's Expos, how do I go about picking my fishing rod intelligently? And the first thing that most people want to say is, well, I'm going trout fishing. What fishing rod do I need? It's not about the kind of fish you want to catch. It's about the kind of lure or bait that you want to throw and what that bait weighs in combination with the line that you're going to use with that rod. Any good manufacturer will put directly on the rod somewhere above the handle the weight of line that rod is designed to throw as well as the weight of the bait that that rod is designed to throw. And if you follow those two uh, parameters as you're choosing your rod, that's how you're going to get intelligent rod selection. They'll also put length on the rod and the action of the rod or the power Power of the rod and the length is going to dictate how accurate the rod is it's going to dictate how far you can cast it's going to dictate how much power you have for setting hooks the action of the rod is going to dictate or going to delineate how much tip the rod has does it bend just at the tip of the rod or does it bend all the way down into the butt of the rod generally speaking a fast or extra fast action rod is more accurate than is a medium to slow action rod but it's a little bit less forgiving to fish with Bottom line as a consumer, if you learn to read these and apply them to your application rather than just wiggling the rod or choosing it for the kind of fish you want to catch, you're going to end up with a better product. So I dropped this bait straight down between those two trees right there. No, I got a oh, hog, large oh, mouth. Holy large cow, mouth. look at this thing. Oh, you're barely hooked too. Oh, dude. let's net him. Let's net him. Troy, would you net this fish for me? I'd love it if you would, because this is a for this lake, this is a giant. But oh no, I still got him. I still got him. I still got him. Holy cow, I thought I lost him. Now see this just goes to show you. Here he comes. He's coming up to you right here. Here he comes. <laughs> Sweet. Baby, for this lake, <laughs> that, that is, a, is a hog largemouth right there. Now, we might be wiper fishing, but there ain't any of these guys in this boat are not going to complain about catching a, <laughs> a big old largemouth. Now, this is Pueblo. This is Colorado. This is a public body of water, and that's probably a, that's a hog. That's a nice, big, fat largemouth. Give me some largemouth love. That's we're looking like for to wipers see. today, <laughs> but you'll never get me to complain about one of these. And it just goes to show you what we've been talking about. There's bait everywhere. If there's bait everywhere, you fish bait type stuff. It's the fall of the year. Everybody's feeding. Obviously, this guy's done some feeding right here. Ate the lipless crankbait. Now get this. The lipless crankbait was falling straight down. The bait was not being retrieved at all. So if you're gonna, don't think of them as a high speed only bait. I let the bait fall right down this big piece of wood right here. And that's what we got. So I'm gonna give this one a big old kiss. Mwah! And we'll put that one back. Oh, baby, what a fish. We'll see if we can put him back real gracefully here. What a fish, huh? Oh, I'll do that all day long. See you, buddy. Mmm. <laughs> the old lipless crake bait strikes again, you know, and uh, fishing it on a vertical presentation, who'd have thunk it? But uh, not maybe what we're looking for. We're hoping for big wipers, but can't complain about that. <laughs> Take that any day. Any day. Oh, that's a good fun right there. Shad colored bait, lots of shad around. Main river, big hardwood cover. Perfect. <laughs> beautiful fish, Chad, beautiful. Oh, that was nice. I'll take that. We just moved to a new spot and uh, I got the jerk bait out, and this fish is unhappy about being caught. I don't know what it is. It's hard to tell. Everybody eats a jerk bait. It's a, a walleye. walleye. Yeah. And it ain't even there really that go. big of a walleye. But that's okay. We got him in the net. 
Mr. Coburn, I appreciate that. We are truly working the fall mixed bag this morning. You know, we came looking for wipers, but I I've said this on several Fishful Thinker shows, and I'm going to say it again, and that is that, you know, fish for the fish that'll bite. <laughs> In the fall of the year, everybody will bite. And uh, if you get around bait fish, even leaving the walleyes like this now, let me get a hold of this fish and we'll get him out here. All right, beautiful walleye here. And we've caught lots of walleyes on the show, so that's not a, a giant one, but we'll take him. That would be a keeper for this lake. It'd be a delicious walleye, just goes to show you. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get this fish put back here real quick since we're not walleye fishing. Hey, 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 hey. He wanted back a little bit sooner than I was ready to put him back, but that's okay. So just goes to show you, we've got bass, trout, wipers, and walleyes focusing on the shad, staying after it. We just moved to a new spot. That was the first throw. So let's see who else lives here. <laughs> I love a jerk bait. <laughs> I love whatever's working. What did I get this time? Look at there. Oh, another species and he come off. Oh, I had a bluegill on and it was a nice bluegill <laughs> on the lipless crankbait. Let me talk real quick. Let this boat go, but I want to talk about two baits I'm throwing right now and why it's important. Uh, I'm going to come back here and sit next to you, Troy. You mind? No, oh, that's fine. Okay, real quick. You got a jerk bait on one rod and a lipless crankbait on the other rod. And both chrome, both very natural, both large false eyes to make them look like shad. This bait is extremely erratic, and this bait is extremely erratic. The difference being this bait is a horizontal bait. It's moving horizontal through the water column, and it's doing it very erratically based on how I'm working the rod. This bait's very erratic on the drop. As it falls, it planes off, similar to a jig and spoon or, or a, you know, some of the other fall baits. So it planes different directions and gives a nice wiggle on the way down. Both of them are being bit. The only thing that's been bit today is erratic style baits. He, he got bit on a spinner bait. We've got bit on, uh, you know, on the on the jig. No, we haven't been bit on the jig and spoon yet, but we have been bit on the lipless crankbait and the jerk bait. So one's real erratic this way on a steep structure like this. I'll throw it right up against and let it work down. The other one's real erratic horizontally, so I'll work it parallel to maybe 45 degrees from the wall. Both excellent choices. Both of them been bit. Let's see if we can get them bit again. If you've ever fished with me, you ever watched Fishful Thinker, you know that I'm a big fan of working a jerkbait. And a jerkbait in the fall of the year is a great choice. This particular jerkbait happens to be pure chrome. You can see it's a relatively small bait. And it's a very chrome, pure chrome type bait because we have high bright sun and relatively calm conditions. So I'm relying on that flash to get bites. So we'll see uh, anytime you get around big schools of bait, uh, anything that's real erratic can often be the choice to get the bait fish to scatter and the predator fish to then subsequently come and eat your bait. So we're trying to spook the bait fish, make them run, and make our bait be the only thing left in the strike zone. Oh, that's just, that is textbook right there, yeah. what you look for. Yep, that is The nervous textbook, water, the bird's diving. That is textbook. I'm not letting mine sink much. I'm just letting it flutter like two yeah, or three feet. Yeah, I'm doing the same. I'm counting it down about four or five seconds. And then just working it back. Crazy. They're everywhere, they're nowhere. <laughs> well, there's one thing they got, it's no shortage of bait. That's for sure. There you go. Got us another walleye. Nice walleye. It's funny, everyone thinks that high bright sun is a uh, is not conducive to a jerk bait, a real calm, high bright sun day. Now that fish was three quarters of the way to the boat. The boat's in 30 feet of water and I get a walleye on a shallow running bait right under the surface. And it just goes to prove that, that uh, you know, the fish at this time of year, in the fall of the year, they don't relate to the structure, they relate to the bait. To the bait. And this bait got me what would be an excellent, excellent dinner if we were inclined to eat one. That would be a good one to eat. He's all scarred up on this side right here. What do you think, Mr. Coburn? That's a nice fish. That's a pretty one there. You got it like that. So a yes, couple of we're in 30 feet of water. We got bait going right around behind us. Let's go ahead and put this guy back, see if we can catch one here. Wee ha what a pretty fish. Hello. See you, see you, Mr. Hello. Walleye. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, I love so the, seeing that little white dot disappear. Yeah, the the, the, you know, the little chrome jerkbait in 30 feet of water. People say, man, why are you fishing four feet under the surface? 
Well, because that's where the bait is. And where the bait goes, so go the walleyes and the wipers I got that. and the bass. I got it, I got it yeah. And everybody else. Right, a related question when choosing a fishing rod is casting tackle, such as this rod with a trigger reel seat right here, versus spinning tackle, where it's designed for the reel to hang underneath right here. General rule of thumb, casting tackle is better with heavier lures, bigger lures, and heavier lines. The advantage of the casting rod is it's very accurate, has one-handed operation, and is very, very powerful. Spinning tackle, better with lighter lures, and lighter lines as a general rule. Uh, can be a very efficient fishing machine, but does generally require two hands to use. Uh, most of the time, trout guys, folks like that are going to use spinning tackle. Uh, lots of bass and walleye guys, and certainly trollers will use the casting gear. Fish right here. Oh, it's a giant. It's a big one. <laughs> That's okay, he played our game. Now the funny thing, here we got a little spotted bass. So now we have picked up another species. Hey, 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 come here. Hold still, hold still. So we got a little spotted bass this time. We've had largemouth bass. We've had a uh, boy heavy on the little on that one. It's all right, he's good luck. Ah! Spotted bass love bluff walls. We got a bluff wall, we got jerk bait, we got bait. We're gonna catch them with it. So now we've got bluegills, spotted bass, largemouth bass, wiper, Walleye, it's all on the shad baits. Welcome to fall fishing. Fish, 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 fish. What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh, he got himself a largemouth. You can feel better, and he'll be able to sleep tonight when, when, when the famous Troy Coburn, world greatest bass fisherman. Oh, no, just kidding. Yeah. Oh. But I do know that. Oh, that's a nice largemouth too, buddy. You gonna swing him up in here? Yeah. There you go. Now, for this lake. I think it's important to point this out. For this lake, that's a very respectable largemouth. Now, it, it isn't anywhere near as big as the four pounder I had a little bit ago, but no. <laughs> Troy and I are good friends, and Troy's heart is, uh, is really on largemouth. That's what he really likes to do. Uh, he just gave that one all seven feet. Now, again, let me show the little grub here. He's fishing a little, little grub, like a hula tail grub, and he's letting it fall, and it's falling straight down through these same schools of shad. So we're still keen on the shad. Notice it's a shad colored bait. And this chunky little largemouth ate it, and yep. uh, and that was very well done, Mr. Coburn. Thank you, sir. Now I feel better. Yeah. Well, see, I knew you could sleep <laughs> a little bit better once you once you get a green one there. Yeah, I'll let you put that one back. You and kiss it. No, I was gonna offer that. Oh to you. no, I you only sure? kiss the ones I catch. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't kiss other people's fish. You know how that goes. <laughs> There's all kinds of reputation involved with kissing somebody else's fish. <laughs> it's hard to tell which way they're moving. That's the deal. You can't tell which way these fish are moving. Oh, here's right here. He's moving right here. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Holy cow. That right was on a the bow giant. of the boat, dude. Right on the trolling motor. I think he attacked your lower Holy unit on your trolling cow. motor. Holy cow. That wiper that was, was like big, that big, big and fish. he was right there. That was a oh, big fish. Oh, man. That got my attention in a hurry. Oh. <laughs> that was a freaking huge oh, fish. Oh, that was a big wiper. And he was right on the boat. It's that funny because was... he rolled over sideways and yeah. you know to get his fish right below the surface. Fish right here. Oh baby. I now we're one. going for a ride. <laughs> We've been messing around with these wipers right here. And uh That's... working that chrome jerk bait. We're in a shallower bay now. And so uh been working that jerk bait in here and they've been busting all around us but they've been they've been uh they've oh, been hard to get close fish. to. That's a big Yeah, he ain't a giant, be, but he's big enough. That I mean, might uh, be a double digit fish. I don't think he's that big, but he's I don't care. I'm happy to have him right now. I'll tell you what. The uh they've been a little less predictable than we would like him to be. And uh and so we'll see. I'm going to keep him close to the boat here. Well, he he uh Come on up here, buddy. And I got him on 10 pound braid with a fluorocarbon leader and my standard jerk bait setup you've seen if you've ever watched Fishful Thinker. I appreciate you, Troy, being all ready for that. And come on over. Oh, Betty, come on back over here. 
<laughs> oh, here he comes. I'm gonna try to get his head up and in the net. And we got him. Oh, sweet. Nice. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Is that your favorite thing? <laughs> let, me, uh, let me get a hold of him real graceful here. Now, actually, let's unhook him first. Let me get the hooks out of him real quick. Be careful. We don't. He's uh, only got one hook in his yeah, snout. Yeah, one hook. He bit right at the front of the boat right here. Let me put that jerk bait down and get a hold of my fish here. What a beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's a nice fish. That is a very beautiful fish. Look at the it's blue. About a, probably about a seven pounder. Uh, yeah, I would say that. That's a good job. Nice. All right. Now, we nice. came up in the back of this creek here and. Uh, We've been pushing them all day, and they've been tough. I mean, we've been able to get close to them. They're very boat spooky. We've been making long throws, and this one chases all the way to the boat and eats my jerk bait right there. So nice. absolutely beautiful. Once you turn the boat a little bit to the east there, and I'm going to go ahead and get this fish put back. We don't want to hurt them. Now, these would be good eating. That's a big, fat hybrid bass right there. Beautiful fish. How can you go wrong with that? And he clobbered our jerk bait. What a fish fish huh that's what i'm talking about big beautiful wiper we'll get him down let him get some air here these guys being half saltwater fish sometimes have some issues we'll give him one more quick look look at the shoulders on that one Woo! what a fish we're gonna turn him up here and let him take off on his own i suspect outstanding mr coburn our day works out. You stole my jerkbait rod. See how that's going to be? We stayed after it. Bottom line, we stayed after the fish. We, we made some adjustments. We moved around. We knew there was wipers in the lake. We knew they'd been feeding. We managed to get a few of them. It seems like as good a place as any to end our day and go to the car. So uh, an early start's important. Staying after the shad. Sooner or later, you're going to get some bites. Troy, thanks for being a guest. Oh, it's my pleasure. On Fishful Thinker. We appreciate, always appreciate having you. And thank you guys for watching. Woo! And, and these ones, we're, get a little talcum powder and powder his hiney before we let him go. Kiss the little ones for good luck. <laughs> I want a best fish. Um, just for good karma, I'm going to go ahead and eat this one. And uh, he <laughs> caught a trout. We're going to put the Bassmaster himself, Troy Coburn. <laughs>